Why are you all looking so damn scared? Act like you're going to funeral. I'm the one fighting. George Fulton, George Fulton. You've been believing all that stuff you've been reading about how hard he hits. George Fulton, not now Joe Frazier. He'll destroy the kid. You my friend, and the public is expecting you. The hell with George Fulton. When you get out here, if you're afraid, just smile. Just act like you're happy. I'm not going to win the fight if I went out thinking like you. Damn George Fulton. How are you? You too. You got new film? New film? Yeah, I ran out last year. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. How are you? Hi, Shane. Good morning. Good, good. Huh? Yeah, Shane's blades in the drone. Yeah, yeah. Like the back of the truck. You made it on the big screen. Not just I know. Oh, yeah, Josh sent it to me. Crazy. Like, What's up, bro? <laughs> they can eat. They good morning. Let me see Shane. They're losing driver. Driving me crazy. Driving me crazy. Woo. Back, baby. Let's go. What's up, bro? Back from Vegas. Uh, back from Vegas. Where have we been? A week back? Two weeks back? Uh, two weeks back. Yep. Two weeks back. First paving job? No, we've been on paving. Film. We've been paving. On first, film. first paving job on film. We've got a pretty bit large road to pave today. Uh, we're going to do about half of it. We milled half of it yesterday. We're going to pave today. We've got a lot of the trucks rolling, so. Glad to be back. Let's go. My Jamaican brother. This is my See it? My, my white brother. Yeah. My Jamaican <laughs> brother. <laughs> hey, it's the man behind all the clean trucks right here. Mm. Log one. Hey, we're trying. Oh, yeah, bro. Boom. Welcome back on YouTube. First oh, really? job of the season. <laughs> wow, first, the first run of the year. That's it. <laughs> first run. Then moving on fire. <laughs> yeah, that was like a part of the roll of it right there. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take 12. Yep. Well, yeah, Josh, we're gonna take 12. Yep. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> Morning world of basketball. They got me back on camera. I don't know how good this is gonna go. I'm getting older every year, but 
first big pour of the year. We got about a mile and a half of road to do up here in Wilton, Connecticut. Uh, we're milling out, putting back about 3,000 tons. We're coming up to the four-way stop. It's gonna get a little hairy. It's busy over here. So I'm gonna finish this pass. I'm gonna jump on this side, let Josh finish his pass. And then we're gonna jump on the center line and head back down this way and get this lane completed, give it back to him. And then we're gonna jump to this side when we're done. This is like the, really getting the rust off today because we've been creeping up until today, but now we're starting to jam. Weather's good and uh, it's about 8.30 and yep. we have a couple hundred on the ground. Trucks are rolling, paper's rolling and um, getting ready to start the season. It'll be a good day. Cars keep coming down. We got cops down here, and cops down there, and the cars switch. system it's reading a one one inch cut and basically we're on zero on the other side but we're using our slopometer here which is pretty standard and we're just trying to keep that bubble between two and four I could cut cross slope but we want to cut something right I could set it up to cut a cross slope that's why we're going this route Turn the water up, turn the water up. 
up, one down. Got it, so your right hand is the belt and then this is the actual steering. That, so that's the, for the belt. Yeah, okay, speed. got it. This is speed, this is for the belt, up and down, the belt on, it's in my gears, you know, rabbit gear, turtle gear. And then I got all these like computer screens I can cycle through. Wow. You know, how fast we're cutting, how deep you're cutting. It's pretty complex. Yeah. Um, you can control the amount of water, the percentage. How long do you think it took to get used to using this machine? Like muscle memory machine. <laughs> Me? Yeah. No, well, like the average couple Joe. Hours. Couple hours? <laughs> this setup is the same exact setup as that machine. And this setup is the same exact setup as the trimming machine. So. No matter which way we started learning on the trimmer, and then you can like jump to this one and then to that one. So like the buttons are the same, the controls are the same. So if you can run the little guy, you can run this one, and you kind of get the idea of what's going on. I think working is the only one that actually has this feature. I'm not sure. Once I get my depth set, all I got to do is hit these two buttons. The machine drops down and goes right to green. the same setup as the other one. Yeah, these two machines are exactly the same, so. And the little ones too, right? Yeah, the, the 50, the 120, and the 150 are all the same. I think even the 30, even our 35 is very similar to this setup, but a couple different things. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing how my seeing if the pattern's good and seeing if I'm leaving any chunks. Oh, got it. I'm trying to keep it in the ground, trying to get in some of the binder. And right now we're about 1.6 inches. It's holding like a really nice grade right now, so. Yeah. Up top you're at two, right? Josh was at like two up top. Might be. I'm trying to get the edge down a little bit. We're trying to put a crown back. How do you know how deep to go? Tom gives us a spec, you know, inch and a half, two inches. Okay. But out here, it's mostly on our discretion, like what we think. If the road needs a crown, we'll put a crown back in it. A lot of times, these roads, they'll be flat, and we'll just mail two passes down the edge, get the edges down a little bit, put the crown up. Now, when you guys say crown, I mean, for me, I don't know what that means. The crown of the roads like this. Yeah. So is that for drainage? So the water sheds off the side. We're holding a one and a half percent on the crown, so good. Yep. I want I want everyone in the YouTube comments to wish Josh a happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> birthday, I forgot. Happy birthday. My brother, see, he forgot. I don't know what day. Josh's know. birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday, Josh. I got you a whole road of milling to do. Is that awesome or what? Long road. Better. My wife had to tell me it was my birthday too. I forgot. <laughs> Honestly, I've had, I've, had that, I've had that happen. You know what's right? a lifesaver is Facebook. When you wake oh, up, yeah, whose yeah. birthday? I saw that. Yeah, yeah. You log in, you're like, oh shit, it's my birthday. <laughs> so you guys did a job right here, right? Yeah, Paved this road like what, 12 years ago? Over 10, 12 years ago. Okay. We make it right to the end here. We probably got 20 feet left. The paver. We're yeah, we're waiting on a truck, but we had a full hopper, and the paver, the floor just gave out. The live feed floor, no mas. How are we going to get the mix out? At the end of the day, we got to finish the job, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're sitting there trying to shovel it out, shovel it out. All of a sudden, Bill had an idea to get a piece of wood, stuck it on the floor, big got board. the machine. Yep, big board, just any piece of two by four. Yeah, yeah. Stuck it on the floor and pushed it and pushed the and mix hand. out of the of the paper with the machine. You put it against the bucket here, the long board, well, first and pushed it. First, what? first we had to dig out the hop. That's what I said. We first hopper. had an empty yeah. one. Right. Right. Explained scooped it. it out, scooped it out, got as much as we can. The machine, the machine hydraulics were down. But luckily the gates, the gates were open. So I didn't know this, but I guess you could manually push your belts, right? So we took a long two by four, stuck it on the belt, 
pushed it with the skid steer and pushed the material oh, through the machine. Oh, I get it. So the skid steer was alongside it and you're... And we, right? The paper was not moving. Oh. It was still. We just needed to get the blacktop out of the Oh, high. out of it. So we just pushed it through the, where it usually comes out of the bottom of the screen. So we had to just keep forcing it back and getting whatever was left oh. in the hopper out of the paver. Moral of the story is the last 20 feet of that road is paid by hand. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. crazy. Because a man is always capable. Make sure he understands the moment because a man always understands the moment. And you know what else a man does? What? He says, give me my theme music. I've seen the shit I eat with these hands. 43 next week. You gotta eat what you can when you're on the job, you know? It's so protein, it's not, baby. It's I break. can't sit and eat steaks all day, you know? <laughs> Let's see where these trucks are at. Gotta find out where the trucks are at. You can track them? Oh yeah, baby. Come on. Hey, we got a Oh, we got a truck. Oh, we got one. That's the only issue is the plant's kind of far, right? Yeah. yeah. Dan Mary's the closest. We got no fucking service here either. So show me what's going on down here. Well, I'm up top on the paver right now. Yeah. My job is to empty trucks, to keep the paver straight, and make sure that the trucks don't bump the paver, keep a steady speed, and feed the material to my screen guys who are down bottom. And also watch up above. That's my, one of my number one jobs, wires and trees. So actually that's why we keep the a lot of guys ask me why we keep the cover down. Um, you see the stick on top of the truck? Yeah. So we keep that down in case there's a stick that falls in. Uh, we don't want it to go under the pavement machine. So this is my whole control board. I can do pretty much everything from up here, but right now I'm just steering. Uh, we're running this road. It's about ranges anywhere from 24 to about 30 feet wide. This paver goes from 8 feet to 16. So uh, we're constantly going in and out. Right now, I'm about 13 feet wide, so all I'm doing is keeping the edge of my hopper right on that line right there and trying to keep it straight as possible. I'm also controlling the steadiness of the material. Um, sort of important to get a nice steady flow as best we can with the trees and the wires. Uh, but we have to constantly raise and lower the body because of these limbs. So I gotta be in perfect concert with the with the driver right here. I'm watching, making sure he doesn't roll out. I'm actually pushing him. He's in neutral right now. He's got light brake, very light brake. And I'm watching my tires, making sure they're in contact with the paver, watching the, the top of the body, and watching, making sure that my hopper is right along that seat. And that allows these guys what I'm trying to do is make sure that both sides is open about the same. If I'm too far over, he'll be all the way open, he'll be all the way closed. So whenever I can, I want to try to keep the, the, the sides of the paper about the same. So I'm constantly looking over here too, to make sure that his side's not bigger than his side. Now these guys up front should be watching the trees too, and the wires also. And the idea is to get a nice steady flow. The steadier the flow, the better the product. Now that noise you hear, all the trucks are equipped with vibrators, which allows the body to become nice and clean. Look at the body. See how clean his body is, no nothing in the back. The vibrator helps that a lot. 
this little road on the side to the right, yep. that's actually about 18 and a half feet wide right there. So now I'm going to have to make two pulls. I'm going to pull straight up here and then I'm just going to walk it into the uh, other side road and we're going to make a, a, about a three quarters of a width of pass and then back up. I'm actually going to shut this side of the paving machine off. I'm going to run about a half, three quarters of a screen full of material down this side. Now I'm walking it over. It's too wide for the paper machine. You see how I left? Now I'm just gonna run a half a screen. It's about six feet wide. Okay, now we need more material. So you can see the configuration of this. I can't really push the truck through here, so now we gotta actually dump asphalt in, pull the truck out. Forward reverse. There like a like a video game. <laughs> One car, hold that car. This paper is really easy to operate though, because it's got so much power. You can pretty much do whatever you want. So sometimes you'll be driving down a road and you'll see a line like that right there. That's where they had to make two passes. I'm actually, yeah, about six feet wide right here. You want me to screen that or are you going to shovel it? Okay. See that little pile right there? I would have screened it off, but they're young and stupid. So. <laughs> so now when we go to take off here, this is like a little separate core. They may have to do a little handwork right here to blend this material together. We got the silos filled, so the material should go pretty quick. Yeah. See the truck coming back now. If you look up top, you see all the tree limbs. Yep. So we got to be careful of that. Uh, we don't want to snap one, but we, we definitely don't want the sticks going in the pavement. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's a little bit of geometry involved in this paving motion. It's or, or a math problem. So we're taking tons of material, right? There's 22 ton on that truck. You dump it in here. You're tunneling it back. You're arguing it over, and it's all going underneath this steel plate over here. It's going down about two inches thick. So there's a ton of material being forced underneath this plate. Um, and in order to keep the plate from moving up and down, you got to introduce the material at the same speed. Um, if you put too much material, the screed wants to pick up. If you run it out, it wants to go down. So I actually, in, in my computer system here, I have... Um, we have uh, settings for how fast the belts spin and how fast the augers go. Right now we're paving 45 feet a minute. So I have my belts and my augers set about at 40%. And that allows the material to come back at a steady flow um, at 13 feet wide um, with 40% material coming back. It should help my mat be steady. If I'm paving deeper or wider or faster, you got to change everything. But if I take this whole truck, this whole hopper full, and shove it underneath that screed, that's when you see guys cranking the screeds up and down, and the inspectors hate that. Um, if you want to not touch the, the cranks going up and down, the better you feed the material to the bottom of the plate, the smoother it is and a lot easier it is for the operator. That's why one speed uh, with the paver and one speed with the delivery of the asphalt also. So this truck, Shane, this is our this is our live bottom. This is actually the, the truck that has the belt on it. Um, and the belt is off now. This is why we did this truck, because I can use it for the truck with the belt or without. Um, but this is really a nice way to feed material on a roadway. Now the belt feed is also good. You know what I was telling you about the geometry? You see how that asphalt's coming out of there? It's nice and slow and steady. That's awesome. takes a lot of pressure off me 
and the guys because we don't have to worry about raising the body on the truck watching it. I'm not watching up top now, now I only have to watch the truck. This speed, I can even get a smoother road with how steady this material is coming out. And they're just faster, they're cleaning, there's no spillage, you don't have to raise the truck up and down. And it feeds it right to the center of the hopper, which is really cool. I know you don't have to be a paving guy to see how, how nice that is, right Shane? Yeah. Uh, that's smooth, right? I feel bad, everyone's sitting in the DM saying, you're sold out. We're really not sold out, we're just sold out some items. Well, I mean, it's, it's tough because you're, a one man band, one man been, band. You know, you're on the job from six to six. I so. won't be a one man band for long. So this year we're going to be adding some people to the team. I like that. And um, just getting a more consistent rollout. Yeah. I think that's a huge part of it. Um, now that you're blowing up. Blowing <laughs> now that the brand's getting yeah. honest, you know. But yeah, it's tough. I mean, like today, right? Typically I'd be on the paver, uh, but we're down a driver, so I'm driving in the truck. And I have a four o'clock phone call, pretty important, with John Deere, which I'll be lucky to make. I got my laptop in here just in case. Um, Pull over on the side of the road or something like yeah, that? Right. Steal Starbucks Wi Fi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then at 4 30, I have a call with my merchandise partner, um, which I'll be lucky to make. And uh, that's just what it is now. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this year, goal of mine is to. Like I said, get things more consistent. Um, I'm not letting go, just getting the team around me and putting people in position. Um, Scott, that's it. You know, probably the last year and even now, it's like saying no to more opportunities. And yes, yeah. Yeah. which is a good thing. Um, but we do have a lot of cool things coming out. Um, hopefully by the time you see this video, we'll already have the Malden video out, right? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, so I don't want to say too much on it because, I mean, it is a raised on blacktop, limited run of graders. Um, we're just not sure how we're going to roll it out yet. And, um, yeah, that'll be something that should be available to order this summer and this fall. Um, also, already talking about World of Asphalt. Um, I've got a crazy idea that I'm going to keep to myself for now. Um, but I wanted to, you guys saw what we did last year. I want to do that like times 10. Um, but it is, even that it's over the winter, it is getting yeah. like, yeah. we're on a time crunch already. <laughs> it sucks. Um, so I'm even thinking about outside the box. You know, maybe we won't do a booth. Maybe we'll do like a pop up shop on, okay. on Broadway. I like that. In, like right in Nashville. That'd be sick. I think that'd be cool. Um, not that I want to pe take people out of the show, but. And it's just to be, I like to do something different. Yeah, yeah. Right? We're, we're disruptors. Yeah. And I got another crazy idea that I'll keep to myself too. But it involves having all the raised on blacktop equipment in one place. Um, at the show, maybe not at the show. You know, maybe we'll rent a, rent a warehouse or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already saying too much. Drive it down Broadway or something. Yeah. <laughs> Want to do another party? Hopefully we get Kid Rock to come. Ooh. No, that'd be crazy. <laughs> That's the, yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. I want Kid Rock. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. So it's early April. Um, what's tough with this merchandise thing, the race down blacktop, is that it gets busy at the same time and it slows down at the same time. Yeah, talk a little bit about the drop. I would love to show you guys photos right now. Actually, this is a sample right here. I'm not crazy about this patch, but um, it's a totally 100% custom hat. See, we got the uh, kind of like our racing collection hat. Um, same material, lightweight. It's a perfect summer hat. It's not sweaty, uh, breathable. And this is a hat that I've been working on for like, it sounds crazy. I've been working on this hat for like four months. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, my plan is to like get a nice style hat and have this be like a staple in the store. And then we'll, we'll switch it out with different colors. Like you guys know our colors are black and white, and we like to use red accents because it complements um, a raised on black top of it, and it complements fair pavement a little bit. Plain favorites. Yeah. Um, but like this hat, like I want to do this hat in gray and white and orange, or um, come out with like a baby blue hat, like a limited run. You know, so you do some colors that go together. But as far as this drop, um, it's going to be like a, like a two 
part summer drop. So first, we're gonna do some accessories. So we got, I know you guys love the decals, so we're gonna do like a pack of decals that are all different styles, a little similar, but all different styles. So you can put them on your truck, your hard hat, your cooler, your toolbox, what have you. Uh, what else we got coming out? A look, we're doing like a small golf line. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are golfers out there. I'm not, I'm like a twice a year kind of guy. <laughs> Like my brothers, they like to the golf a lot. So we're gonna do, some of it's gonna be a little collector's item, so they might be a little expensive and low quantity. Uh, but we're doing like real Titleist golf balls. Um, and then we're doing like these really nice quality golf towels, something that you could have on your bag. Or I don't think you'd use them as a rag, but <laughs> I guess you could. Um, we're doing beach towels that are fully printed. Uh, coming back with the bandanas, we're doing white bandanas this time. Um, however you want to use those. Uh, what else? License plate frames. Those that I think are going to be super hot. Um, what other accessories? We're going to dabble with some, some women's stuff. Um, a lot of the women are asking for things and I get them and they don't sell that well. Um, but we are doing like some biker shorts. Coming out with more kids' clothes, kids' safety vests. Um, so that'll all be in May. And then later in the year, it might be like maybe a month or two after, we're doing more beach towels. We're gonna bring the straw hats back for the real hot summer months. And then we're gonna be doing some bathing suits, uh, potentially those basketball shorts that you saw. Um, and I've had a couple of requests for like some dry fits. Dry fit t shirts. Oh, well, cutoffs. Like, not the tank tops, but like the, the cutoffs up here. I know some guys need to uh, have sleeves on on the job. There's a lot of guys out there that just do residential and commercial work and they can wear whatever they want. So, uh, doing some cutoffs. Um, and I'm already looking towards the fall now. So the fall, it's going to be a uh, smaller collection. Like some real quality, 100% custom quarter zips, um, so like polyester hoodies, and possibly some sweaters. Sweet. Driving the nicest truck in town. <laughs> How's your day going out here? Good so far. So good? far, so good. Good. I'm alive nice. and well. Thank you. One start with the American paving. You're good. Oh. Back to the plant. <laughs> Snap is 
shit that comes through the paver. This thing probably weighs 50 pounds. What is that? I don't know, it's something from the plant. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Park these two vehicles right in the middle of the road. Yep. Nobody's getting through. Yep. And then this way, I'll be there waving them down. Anything this way, I don't gotta watch this. Right. Anything going down? Going that way. Right. But I need you to block this off because I can't run. Pick up right there. We can block it right Both off. trucks right there. Okay, let's do it in front of this John Deere. <laughs> so this is a cut through road here in Wilton, and this is like a commuter road. Everyone's trying to go around Route 7, but whenever you get a three-way triangle, one. Two, three. This is hectic. <laughs> this is this is hectic. It is. Con Expo's over. All the shows are over. We're back in Connecticut. Weather's good. We're back to paving. Um, I just wanted to thank the John Deere family. Um, you guys treated us like VIP. Um, loved every minute of it, and uh, we really appreciated the time we spent with the John Deere family out there. And everything that Deere did for us was amazing. The show was amazing. 2023 is going to be a great season. Let's do it. Blacktop!